All righty, for part two of chapter 11 here, we're going to talk about solubility and how things form a solution. I, specifically, we're going to look here in 11.3 about things going into liquids, gases, liquids, and solids. Okay, it might be kind of weird to think about. Right? We're accustomed usually for solids dissolving in liquids, but we can think about it with regard to gases and liquids as well. Okay, so revisiting what you probably already know from previous material, right, we have a measure of solubility. Right? And that measurement is the maximum concentration of the solute that we can put into a solvent under whatever conditions we're given. Okay? And when something is soluble, right, and it's at its solubility limit, right, the dissolution process is at equilibrium. Right? If you were to add one more particle, Right, then it would crash out into solution. But at the solubility limit, right, something is dissolving and precipitating all at the same time. We've got three key words here that I want you to know from chapter 11 at the bottom. Yep. We call a solution saturated when the solute's concentration is equal to its solubility, the maximum amount that we can put in there. Yep. Anything less than that, we call it unsaturated, yep. also known as a dilute solution. Super saturated is when something is more, which might seem kind of weird to think about, right? How the heck can we get something to be more soluble than the solubility limit? Uh, there are ways, right? You could heat it up and let it cool gently. Uh, a common example is uh, soft drinks are typically super saturated with carbon dioxide, which is why you hear it hiss as soon as you open a can. Uh, but they're also not exceedingly common, right? Typically we're gonna deal with things that are saturated or unsaturated, but be aware that super saturated solutions do exist. Yeah. So let's start by thinking about gases and liquids and how they interact yeah? and dealing with Henry's law. Henry's law gives us a relationship between solubility and partial pressure, yeah? because pressure is important with regard to gases. Yeah? The extent that the gas can dissolve in a liquid depends on a couple of things. Intermolecular forces, number one. Okay? The more similar the chemical structures and the more similar the intermolecular forces, the better this thing will dissolve. The higher the partial pressure, right, the more concentrated something will be. Okay? Higher pressure means we can force more into the solution. Think about it like a column pushing down, forcing the gas into solution. And lastly, the temperature. Okay? Temperature has an inverse effect. The higher the temperature, the less soluble gases tend to be. And more on that in a second. But we need to know how to use Henry's Law from chapter 11. We okay? have three key terms. The concentration of a gas is equal to a constant times the partial pressure of the gas. And those are listed out here on slide 20. Okay? Henry's Law is a measurement, right, as I just mentioned, of the concentration of a gas that can be dissolved. Okay? Quantity of an ideal gas, we're always dealing with ideal gases here, that dissolves in a definite volume of liquid. Okay? Directly proportional to the partial pressure. The higher the pressure, the higher the concentration of the gas. Okay? So Cg equals the partial pressure multiplied by that proportionality constant, which provides you some information on the identity of the gas with regard to its IMFs and the temperature. Changing the temperature or the identity would change the proportionality constant. Okay. But that proportionality constant will be given to you. Okay. So it's just using those three terms for really simple calculations with Henry's Law. Okay. My focus here is less on knowing and doing math with Henry's Law. You'll have a little bit of that on your homework, but more so just knowing the relationship. Okay. Better IMFs, stronger IMFs, more gas will dissolve. Okay. Higher pressure, more gas will dissolve. Higher temperature, less gas will dissolve. Okay. So that's why, you know, as I already alluded to, opening something that's carbonated allows gas to escape because it's under lower pressure. Okay. It's also why increasing temperature, right, global warming has negative effects on bodies of water. There's less oxygen that's dissolved in the water. And we can see that right here. As temperature increases, solubility of gases decreases, which is an important takeaway. Okay. There are some variations from Henry's law. Okay. That equation isn't perfect. 
if you have any sort of chemical reaction going on between a gas and a solvent, you might have more of the gas dissolving than you would predict. Okay? But I won't ask you about any of those variations. Just be aware that they exist. So that's gases and liquids. How about liquids and liquids? Yep. Two new terms I want you to know here. Maybe you know, maybe you haven't seen them before. Okay, but key terms from chapter 11, miscible and immiscible. Okay. Because if we have two liquids coming together, we don't really think about it as a solute and a solvent, right? We think about them mixing together. Either they do or they don't. If they do, they're called miscible. Two liquids that mix together with one another in all proportions. And that only happens when they have the same type of IMS. Okay. Like dissolves like is the key thing for solubility. If they have similar IMS, they will mix with one another regardless of their phase. Ethanol and water is an example of that. Right? Ethanol has an OH on the end, water has an OH. They both hydrogen bond, they mix together. Okay. Otherwise, vodka, for example, would settle out, which it does not. If they don't mix together, they are called immiscible and they form layers with one another. Oil and water are immiscible. Okay. So typically, if you have a solution between liquids like antifreeze, right, you want them to be miscible. Okay. And this is what they look like. If they're not, they clearly form liquids. Or sorry, liquids. They're both liquids. They clearly form layers. Okay. So that's really all you need to know about um, two liquids coming together, those two terms, miscible and immiscible. Yeah. We finish by thinking about solids going into liquids. And I just want one key takeaway here, that relationship to temperature again. Now for gases, increasing the temperature decreases the solubility. And for a majority of solids, the opposite is true. As you increase the temperature, you increase the solubility. Yep. There are a couple of exceptions. You don't have to know them. And that's the only thing I want you to take away. The higher the temperature, the more soluble a solid is. Yep, nothing tricky. We can see that. Oh, I skipped over the slide. We can see that right here. Right, here's one of those exceptions with selenium sulfate, or sorry, cerium sulfate. Right, but for everything else, look at that. As the temperature increases, you see the solubility increase, which you probably already knew. Yep, so that's the only thing to worry about there. Couple of new terms from this section 11.3, right? Saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated, no Henry's law, right? no immiscible and miscible, right? and the relationship between temperature and solubility. But other than that, as long as you know like dissolves like, you're ready to go. Okay? And the next section, we'll talk about solutions and the calculations that are involved with those.